and also premier there. Sir, uh, thank you very much uh, and, and welcome to our show. Thank you so much. Uh, greetings to you and greetings to the viewers. So we haven't heard much from the Eastern Cape um, uh, during these last three days of conference. I think let's just start off by, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the Secretary General's uh, report on Friday. The Eastern Cape's take on uh, the, the, the organizational report by the Secretary General. Well, uh, we think that uh, that report was very comprehensive in a sense that uh, it helped uh, to unearth or surface matters that are of concern to the organization that needs to be addressed. It in a way complemented uh, to us the introduction in the political overview done by the president. So together with the documents we are discussing presently, they help to expose the issues that need the organization to reflect on and we are very much encouraged by that. Uh, shall I say honesty? Uh, it, it, it is that which we must respond to. The, the, the frank honesty of the report uh, it, in, indicates an ANC that, that, that has seen better days, that at the moment it is not at its, it, 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 at its best. How does the decisions taken at this conference, uh, uh, how, do they, or, yeah, how do they impact, how do they change uh, uh, the ANC going forward? How do they put it in a better uh, uh, health condition, if I can put it like that? Well, firstly, by going through these, uh, the first thing we said, uh, we should actually be seen to be listening uh, to ourselves, listening to what the people say. And I think the exposition, as was contained in the documents, is a step in that direction. And we're hoping in the discussions we'll take the resolutions, resolutions coming out of here, will be recommendations to the national conference. But there are things that will not have to wait for the national conference that need to be done by our branches, by our structures, as we get out of this uh, policy conference. Certainly it should lead to a change in the manner we do things, in the manner we approach uh, organizational work, in the manner we approach a sense of agency to some issues has got to be demonstrated uh, going out of here. Mm. Just elaborate a little bit on what some of those issues are. Uh, for instance, in the report, if I may, sir, uh, the, 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 the report spoke about issues of ethics within the movement, issues of values, is issues of, of, of traditions that are no longer being followed, that are, that are in decline. What are issues, uh, in your opinion, that uh, need urgent attention? Firstly, I think we do need, uh, as almost, uh, shall I say, uh, what will secure this uh, guarantee. Firstly, you need branches that are sufficiently empowered to hold all levels of leadership accountable. Because in the absence of accountability of leadership, we're less likely uh, to achieve most of the things we want. So the starting point is strengthen our branches, have branches acting more independently and decisively, of course within the parameters of the organization. Uh, it's an important thing. Of course the leadership has got to steer the ship, has got to guide things. And of course there is this expression that we've got to walk the talk. It should be that the direction we point, we can be able to demonstrate it so that there is a, a followership to that which we say because we demonstrate the truthfulness of what we say in what we do. All right. Let's talk a little bit about accountability, sir. Uh, the president himself has been it, it, quite the firing line, uh, you know, uh, coming in, in into this conference. Parliament is busy with an investigation into members of the NEC uh, that are key cabinet ministers in the government. Uh, you know, they're being investigated for alleged issues of corruption. What do you think? Uh, uh, should any of them be found guilty? What do you think should be the sanctions against members who are found to have acted outside or not? not in the best interests of the Republic. In fact, this matter received a lot of attention in the National General Council, where, where we had established uh, from the last conference uh, the Integrity Commission, Integrity Committee. The Integrity Committee was uh, given teeth by the last uh, National uh, General Council, so that uh, there isn't even a debate on the conduct that brings uh, disrepute to the African National Congress. So in all the investigations or allegations that are there of improper conduct, where there is a finding uh, on the part of those involved, definitely 
the ANC constitution kicks in because we cannot anymore uh, live to the situation where individuals, through their actions, uh, bring uh, dishonor to the African National Congress. All right. Let's talk a little bit about the policies, particularly uh, economic uh, policies, that uh, you in the Eastern Cape would like this conference to adopt that could potentially help the plight of, of, of the province, particularly the poor in the Eastern Cape. Well, thank you. You see, indeed, we are in a very unique position, first as a country. We have characterized uh, our situation as we were engaged in struggle as colonialism of a special type. Of course, owing to the circumstances we have had, elements of apartheid special uh, inequalities remain to date. Uh, rural provinces like ourselves in the periphery of the main centers of economic uh, activity continue to be receiving the very uh, raw end of the stick. We want to, through this, poli through this uh, national policy conference, as we are going to the national conference, start uh, really raising sharply the issue of inequalities that continue 23 years on, the disparities that come as a result of uh, the apartheid special dispensation that uh, largely remains intact, which we've got to really work much harder to change, hence the relevance to us of this uh, concept of a radical approach to economic development. What are the consequences towards the movement? Should uh, uh, this should this talk of radical uh, economic transformation not materialize in actual uh, uh, changing or, or the betterment of the lives of ordinary uh, uh, South Africans, particularly uh, uh, Eastern Cape people? Look, uh, firstly, uh, the people shall lose all hope uh, in the liberation movement that they have none uh, else to look up to, uh, because uh, the promise for a better life the promise for jobs uh, will continue to be a distant uh, matter. Uh, so we've got to really grapple with the issues of uh, transformation in the economy in a sense uh, to really impact on the structure as we have it, to respond to the need of needs of our people, which uh, I think are disproportionately placed if you look at the dispensation we have presently. All right. So thank you very much. We appreciate you taking the time to come and talk to us. Uh, much appreciated. Thank you, sir. Thank that you. was uh, Pomulo Maswale, who is uh, the chairperson of uh, the uh, Eastern Cape, who's here talking to us about the importance of the policies that will be discussed and debated here at the National Policy Conference in Nasrec, and how if those policies aren't then uh, practicalized and, and implemented for the people, uh, many South Africans, particularly those that live in, in rural provinces, such as the, uh, the Eastern Cape will lose hope in the movement. Uh, well, for the time being from us here at NASRAC, we give you back to studio and we hope to see you a little bit later.